One important way that people use fermentation is to create compelling flavors. Through the transformative action of microorganisms and the enzymes they produce, some of the most common foods, such as beans, become sources of intense flavor. Fermented beans are a big part of what gives flavor to Sichuan cuisine. At the heart of the cooking is dobanjang, the famous paste that marries the penetrating heat of chili peppers to the rich umami of fermented broad beans. It's a compelling combination and one of the foundations of the province's far-reaching culinary reputation. To learn more about Dobanjang, we meet Chef Guan of Pishan Red Star Restaurant, about an hour northwest of Chengdu. He is known as a virtuoso of Dobanjang and the creator of a delicacy called Toto Fish, a fiery red fish stew in which the key flavors come from the local three-year-age Dobanjang and Sichuan-style pickled vegetables. Pishen District is renowned in China as the birthplace of Dobanjang and where the best ones are still made. This probably has something to do with the moist climate around here. The abundant rain, humidity, and mist are ideal conditions for the fungi that initiate this fermentation. Chef Guan invites us to take a tour of the production plant from which he supplies bean paste for his restaurant. These are fancy. Dobanjiang involves three main ingredients. Fermented broad beans, red chilies, and salt. Hundreds of tons of chilies arrive here every year from all over China. They are chopped and fermented for a hundred days in huge tanks under a thick layer of salt. Then they are moved to a sun-drying facility the size of several football fields, where they are mixed with the beans, fermented separately for one year. It's an epic sight, like the merging of two ancient Oka rivers. Light, because exposing the surface to sunlight dries and concentrates the paste. Time, because the process takes a lot of it, and the longer the paste ages, the better its flavor. Rainwater, because fermentation is facilitated by the high humidity of the rainy Sichuan climate. The pickle manufacturer in me is extremely excited to see such a massive scale of production. The two-year-old bean paste creates a distinctive color contrast next to the one-year-old. You can see that the red color deepens and darkens as the Dobanjiang ages. The clang and hum of the stirring machines maneuvering their way through the facility might not be the most graceful view. But I find there to be a strange poetry in these massive industrial processes. But for centuries, Dobanjang has been made by hand through the relentless pounding work of human arms. The same factory also produces dobanjang using the traditional method in earthenware crocks that are open to the sky and stirred every day with a long wooden tool. <laughs> Mixing it by hand is hard work. The fermenting paste is dense and thick and takes a lot of energy to stir. We taste dobanjang at different ages, as old as seven years. Its flavor deepens and also softens over time. The younger ones are spicy, while in the older ones, heat increasingly gives way to earthiness. The terrace workshop is lined with endless rows of fermenting vessels, all sorted by their stage of fermentation. When the crocks are open, the surface of the paste is smoothed out and compacted to a perfectly flat surface to allow it maximum exposure to the sunlight, only to be smashed and mixed up the following day, again and again. Chef Guan 
Chef Guan invites us to his restaurant to show us a few doubanjiang recipes. We couldn't be happier. He teaches us a quintessential Sichuan delicacy, mabo dofu. To make mabo dofu, heat a couple of spoonfuls of vegetable oil in a piping hot wok. Add a dollop of fresh doubanjiang and stir it in well to let the flavor explode in the wok, as the Chinese say. Chef Guan uses two tablespoons of one-year-old and two tablespoons of two-year-old paste. The first one for color and spiciness, the second one for depth of flavor. Add a tablespoon of whole fermented soybeans, a quarter cup of red chili powder, and a tablespoon of ground fresh ginger, and bind them together with a splash of water. Now add half a cup of minced beef, previously fried with flour and peppercorns. It's now time for the tofu. The silky, smooth cubes, pre-boiled for three minutes, create a stark contrast with the boiling, spice-infused lava bubbling below them. But with a few gentle stirs, they slowly relax, absorbing the fiery, oily sauce as it reduces. A small audience gathers around the stove, including my mum, our driver, and the whole restaurant staff. But Chef Guan is not camera shy and swiftly dishes out a perfect Pichin style marble dolfu. For a final touch, add a sprinkling of coarsely ground flour peppercorn to make your mouth tingle with joy. The surprises are not over as Chef Guan decides to treat us to a full on meal and share some of his best dishes. His restaurant is an ode to Pichin Dobanjang and to pickled products. He fills the table with a mind-boggling array of artfully prepared appetizers, showcasing local ingredients and fermentation traditions. Steamed shrimp and fava beans are followed by crunchy slices of bamboo shoot, a cube of pungent fermented tofu, crispy petals of spicy cured beef, and a gorgeous corona of lightly pickled celtus, a thick stalked green. The meal continues with roasted duck from a nearby farm, Chef Guan's signature toto fish stew, and the unforgettable Eight Fairies Tofu Soup, a big bowl of wobbly bean curd that comes with a set of crispy toppings like pork cracklin, roasted peanuts, and fried soybeans. It was a symphony of the palate. While we digest, Chef Guan takes us to the restaurant's pickling structure a couple of miles away. We are amazed by the sight of a terracotta army of pickling jars filled with hidden wonders just waiting to be uncovered. There's no name tag on the jars, so finding what you're looking for is a bit like a treasure hunt. He's looking for the green beans. The long beans. The long beans. But success awaits the truly determined, says the Chinese proverb. <laughs> Strong. This one tastes like it's been fermenting for a long time, too. Mm, it's delicious. And so really crunchy. Mm -hmm. Our tour comes to a fitting end when Chef Guan opens a big jar full of doubanjiang, fermented a relatively short time, still red and spicy. Fermentation really drives the flavor here in Sichuan province. Learning about how doubanjiang is made has taken us one step deeper into China's rich and diverse fermentation traditions, and we are ready for more.